Now friends, I do want to give a warning just for the sake of YouTube. If you do not want to see a rabbit being butchered, not the death, but the breakdown process, the skinning, the gutting, if you are squeamish at all or against eating animals for meat, please choose a different video. Hey friends, how are y'all doing today? Today we are going to butcher some of our rabbits, some of our meat rabbits. Uh, we have five that need to be butchered and to be honest they should have been butchered oh, about a month ago i had chosen to keep three of the females back and we've got two of the males as well and i was trying to debate and see if we were going to keep any of them as future breeders see how their temperaments were what sizes they grew up to that sort of thing but they stayed fairly small and while one of them well, two of them have pretty good temperaments. They're just not what we were looking for. So we're gonna go ahead, butcher them for meat. We are going to pull some of the females out of our batch of kits that we currently have and hopefully retain them for breeders if they grow out the way that I think they will. They're already much larger than the ones we're gonna butcher today were at the same age. So I have high hopes that they're going to grow fairly large. But today, we are going to go through and we are going to butcher these rabbits. We're going to try to show you step by step how to do it because I've gotten a ton of questions on how you butcher the rabbits and what the process is. Now, unfortunately, we are not going to show the actual killing of the rabbits. And I know some of y'all are probably really wanting us to show that. But it's just a YouTube thing. This video won't get shown to very many people if we actually showed the killing portion of the rabbits. But I've gotten a lot of questions over on my Instagram. Yeah. I've done a few ask any things and ask about meat rabbits and stuff like that. And I keep getting the question of how do you butcher meat rabbits? So we're gonna walk through it step by step and show you what needs to be done. Now, before we get started, I wanna let you know you actually start the process the day before, 24 hours before you butcher. You want to cut off feed for your rabbits and give them just water. This will help flush their digestive system out so that you're not having as much of a risk of contaminating your meat products with any poop if you were to mess up anywhere. So that's just why we do that. Um, it's pretty common practice on any animals you butcher is to stop feed prior to them being butchered. So we have done that. They have not had any food for about 24 hours now. They get fresh water during that whole time and everything. Ours are on the ground in rabbit tractors, so they may have snuck a few bites here and there off of the ground. But that's just the case. That's just how it's going to be. We do our best and then we leave the rest up to them. Now, I have to say the best thing probably about having meat rabbits is that you don't need fancy equipment to be able to butcher them. There's no chicken plucker in the rabbit world. You need a way to dispatch them or kill them, a knife for skinning, a way to hang them up, some kind of water source to put them in afterwards. That's it. So this is what we have going on here. So this is a rabbit hanger that Kenneth made. It's just a stick with some holes drilled into it and some rope. The rabbit's feet go through these loops right here. Rabbit's feet go through there like this and you pull it down. And it hangs from a tree with the rabbit in it upside down. Y'all, he literally spent like $3 on some rope and found a stick and made a rabbit hanger. So no fancy equipment needed. I also have a Tupperware container here and it's got some water in it, cold water, with about a teaspoon of salt. That's just gonna help pull any blood that's left in the system out. You're gonna bleed the rabbit out, but there's still gonna be some in the muscles and in the veins throughout the body. And so the salt will just kind of help pull that out. The water will help cool the rabbit down. We also have a cooler here that Kenan's going to get ice for. And this will be our way of cooling the rabbits down immediately after they are skinned. This whole tub of water will just sit down in this cooler and the ice and keep the rabbits cold. You want to cool them down as fast as possible any meat source you want to cool down as soon as you can and then we will leave these in here we'll probably get more ice to put on them 
and leave them in here for a solid 24 hours to let them cool. Now, about two hours after everybody's been butchered, I will go through, dump the salt water out, rinse them off, and put just the carcasses back in that Tupperware in dry, just in a dry-ish environment. It ought to be completely dry and leave them in there like that for the 24 hour period. If you leave them in water, they're gonna become waterlogged and the mussels, you'll notice it. It kind of changes the color of it. It's fine. We did that with our first set. We had no issues. It's just a different texture and a different look. So instead, I will rinse them off and drain the water off of them. And then that way they just don't get that. It's no big deal other than that. But guys, that's really all you need. A way to dispatch, a sharp knife, a way to hang your rabbit, a way to cool them down, and a bucket. A bucket for everything to drip into because you don't want it going all over the ground. Now we do compost all of those rabbit bits that we're not gonna eat. I dig a big hole in the compost, pour it in, cover it up, add more compost on top, and we're good to go. Now, I don't know if y'all can hear him, but Declan is out here with us, obviously. He doesn't really participate, but he is aware of what's going on. For two days now, me and him's been having the conversation about, hey, it's time again. We're going to, he calls it breaking rabbits. So we're going to break the rabbits. These are the rabbits that are gonna be broken. They're gonna be gone and then we're going to eat them. And throughout the past two days, I've just asked him, hey Declan, do you remember what we're gonna to do to the rabbits? And he's like, we're gonna break them. Do you remember why we're gonna break them? And he says, so we can eat them. And then he'll say, can we break this rabbit so we can eat it? Or can we break that rabbit so we can eat it? And he, he understands in his own way, but doesn't all at the same time because he's a child. But it's important to have that conversation so that he's not caught unaware is the whole point. What's happened? What's happened? They got us some ice. So he's just going to loop it around the top and then, and then stick the bottom through and it holds it in place. Now we do have a video from the first time we ever butchered meat rabbits here with Declan and it's called Butchering Rabbits as a Family, I think. I'll have to link it down below. I just wanted to video and kind of show people how kids, especially young kids, will react to a certain situation like that because I know a lot of parents like I was are scared of what their toddlers are going to think or if they're going to give them nightmares or something. So if you are concerned about that, go back and watch that video. You can see how Declan reacted his first time and how we handled it. It's no big deal. And like I said, he's out here playing. He's, I mean, he knows we eat them. He knows we raise them for food. And I think that's the most important part is it's not a surprise. We're not taking pets of his and going and butchering them. He knows these are for food. He's been told that many, many times. They're not our pets. So that's just the key there. Now, another question people have said is, if we have a colony setting, do we have our buck in the colony? And the, no, we don't. Because we wanna control breeding a little bit better than what would happen in a colony. So this is the rabbit tractor over here. That's where our breeding buck is. Excuse the cattle panels on the ground. We're building garden trellises at the moment. Okay, so this is our tractor. These are the grow out bucks. And this is Cadbury, our breeding buck. All right, guys, we're not going to be able to weigh the rabbits today. Um, the scale is not working out here, I guess, because it's not a solid surface. It totally just added an additional 50 pounds onto my weight, which I know is not right. Um, uh, so we're not going to do that today. I will not be able to weigh them. I will invest in a scale to weigh the rabbits for the next time we butcher. So if you want to know what our rabbits average Follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the channel, and I will make sure to add that information in the next time we butcher rabbits. <laughs> Just water, baby. No, 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 it's gonna have blood in it, so don't mess with it, it's dirty bucket. Kenneth is going to walk me through how to butcher this rabbit so that y'all can see firsthand the steps that need to be done. It's easier than me just trying to explain to you what he's doing is if he's actually trying to teach somebody, maybe we won't miss a step that way. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so the first thing we do is we hang our rabbit up, ankle bones towards the wood, paws of the feet away. It goes just under the ankle. This is where the ankle is, I can feel it. And then pull it down. Make sure it's tight. The next thing we want to do is cut its head off because you want to drain all the blood as fast as possible. Knife, please, sir. From a nurse, if you get blood on your clothes, hydrogen 
peroxide will take it out. So keep some of that on hand. Spray your clothes. When it bubbles up, it'll bubble it out and then you can wash them as normal. Um, but that's a good tip. I'm gonna wash my hands. We have a clean bowl of water set to the side just to rinse stuff and rinse our hands off. So right under where the cord is resting on his ankle, I'm just cutting the fur. Hold on, Declan. They can't hear me. Hold on, buddy. Declan's singing to the birds. Sorry, oh, guys. That's cool. The problem with Rex, guys, they have beautiful coats, but we get fur everywhere. They can cut you a line just right down in front of it. Okay. Both the legs. And we have figured out somebody else to hold the stick or to put it up against the tree will help. And I just cut the leg. And you can work your fingers under the skin one. like I am yeah, so go. that you don't cut yeah, into the, the main, intestines. Yeah, the main thing is once you get down so far, if my wife don't cut me, is you can get <laughs> your finger down in up underneath because once you get down in around this part, you don't want to get down in past where the sack of the, or all your intestines and organs and stuff. Look at that, my wife's sitting here skinning her first rabbit. No, I've never skinned a rabbit before. It's not hard. You always do it. Pain in the butt part. At least it washes off, right? That's true. But what you do is you take where the white part of it is and where the actual meat starts. You just kind of let the knife do the work kind of thing, you know. He just pulls. This right here is what I was talking about. It likes the hole. Oh yeah, the like tendon. tendon. Like an Achilles and heel tendon type yeah, deal. If you're sitting here, if you don't get it worked out around, it'll actually pull this meat. Right off the bone. Technical term for all the squat stuff is, but the inner parts of it. The inner parts. I like that technical terminology there. The inner parts of the rabbit. The inner parts of the rabbit. Right Y'all, I think the hardest part is to get the fur out from around the legs that once you got that it's like yeah, it moves right along. yeah easy peasy and this fur will wash off the meat it's i mean if you're breeding a a rex rabbit like this they're known for their double coat so it makes them so soft um excuse me sir you literally bought i am supposed to be doing that side you take over everything I do. You do. It's just because I get wrapped up in the moment. Here, I'll let you have it. That's so why if I ever want anything done that Kenneth ain't doing, I yeah. go and start doing it myself. And then he goes and takes it over. I'll remind myself of this. Daddy, get me. So we're just working it down the thigh muscle. Just being gentle right here. Otherwise, you'll pull it. Pull the muscle right off the bone. Still eats the same. It just ain't as pretty of a carcass. My thighs are cleared. You know, take, basically cut all this part no, no, and get it all worked back up till you hit the tail. What's wrong, what baby? Got blood on it. Oh no, daddy got blood on your shovel. We're gonna say it was daddy. Okay, yeah, so see, how far back do you keep working? See, these are your tubes right here. Yeah, these are our gonads. Yeah. Again, guys, again. And yeah, we'll work on that. We get the tide off of it. Rabbits have big gonads. We gotta get through. Right here's where the tail's at. What I like to do is kind of work up underneath and get a hole sorted. This knife's a whole lot better. It's bad when you buy a brand new knife that has never been used. And then you have to turn around and sharpen it before you can use it. There we go. All right, he's ready. This is the easiest part about doing rabbits because once you've got the legs done and the tail is disconnected, it just pulls off. And this is why we wait and butcher at 16 weeks 
instead of 12 because we save the first usually yeah. at 12 weeks this will just shred into pieces and won't stay together i'm so scared i'm gonna pull his legs off okay so now we got them all the way down here now i've had the question of what we do with rabbit feet we compost it like everything else and right here is where the elbow's at you want to get it in the elbow for the socket basically you just keep working that apart hold on there it is right off the can. uh but some people do save the rabbit feet some people go onto their dogs as chew toys um we just compost just about everything You have some air flying at you. <laughs> Love the Rex coat, but the hair is a pain in the butt at butcher time. And that's the actual part right there, the... Okay. okay. Feet are off. Hey, look at that. I did it. We saved the first and we're not ready to tan. I reach inside and pull it back through and keep the insides, the insides, the outsides, the outsides. And then fold it up and put it in a Ziploc bag in the freezer till we're ready to do anything with it. Uh, can I do this part? <laughs> well, I just want to kind of demonstrate. You've demonstrated enough. Okay, well, just barely, um... Easy, yeah, because it's not, it's not thick. I know it's not thick. But basically, once you get your little hole there, you can take and run your finger down to about right here or so, and that's when you're gonna hit the guts. What I do, sit here, put two fingers in, and then cut. kidneys look like um here's our kidneys they look good no issues so if we had worms coccidiosis especially in our rabbit you would see white spots on his liver and this liver is completely clear it, it just looks completely clear there. um his kidneys are good Ain't no, kind of... no issues our spleen it's good I haven't ruptured any kind of stomach or anything, so we're good there. Well, thank the Lord, because it's fixing to get messy if you do. So now, how do we disengage? Just pull? Pretty much. There's a diaphragm there. I <laughs> can get my fingers through it. Yeah. And like I say, this is where your heart, lungs, stuff like that are. Ah, okay. There's the trachea. And then you can stick your finger through to make sure you got the trachea out and it's all out. So you're cutting a V along your thigh muscles to remove that back end shoot there. Well, you see, see it right there. They can see your hands yeah. right there. See it? It's tugging on it now. And all that's connected to this down here. All that's connected to the intestines, so. See, I'm actually already pulling on it, so. Right. Pull, that's you, you poop shoot. You poop shoot. Yeah, we'll Hold on. Okay, so I pulled the poop shoot down after we cut back there. This is our tender line back here, yeah. so keep that. You don't want to mess that up. Yeah, pull your kidneys off. Uh. 
Ew, it stuck to my finger. Oh, my lord. Yeah, for the ones that have never done, especially a deer, it's a totally different smell. Lot, lot. Now all there is is just cutting the legs off. Right over it. Okay. Oh, and she should be. I know. My mom got blood everywhere. I'm sorry. Okay. Just take this right here on the end. Oh. Dad. I got that one, Mom. Look at the. Mom, I got that one. Okay, guys. So that's all there is to it. Then I just took this and that bucket of salt water. You've seen over there. Like I said, I'll let it sit in there for an hour, two hours, um, after we finish all the rabbits. Then I will rinse it back off, put it in the bucket with no water, and keep it in the cooler for 24 to 48 hours to allow the muscles to relax. You don't want to start freezing it before those muscles relax or your rabbit will be very tough. You want tender meat so your muscles need to relax and release those chemicals before you freeze it. A lot of people are concerned because rabbits are cute and butchering them and everything and how that's going to react emotionally. I find if you come at it from a learning experience, you're focused more differently, you're focused on the anatomy and stuff, it becomes easier than if you were thinking about how you raise that rabbit. It's just a different mindset. It's all about your mindset. I hope you actually learned something today. And if you're getting into meat rabbits for the first time, if you've come over from my Instagram because you wanted to learn specifically how to butcher meat rabbits, let me know. I wanna know that you come over. I wanna know if you actually learned something and if you're gonna give this a try. Y'all, this is the first time I've ever butchered a rabbit. Uh, Kenneth normally does the butchering himself. And we just kind of have a, a method worked out where I'll go get the rabbits. He'll get them hung up. He'll get them butchered. I'll get them into the water, get the next one. He gets it hung up. He gets it butchered. Like, it's kind of, uh, we get repetitive in it and it gets it done much, much faster. I'll see y'all next time. For now, bye friends.